my god, you are obnoxious. So guys, what do you do when you have not one, but two PT cruisers? You get your head examined, that's what you do. But what do you do when one of them is a convertible and one of them is a normal wagon? First of all, you still get your head examined, but you also make this video because you gotta do it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this video. I've been so excited to make this ever since I got Project Vert here, my 2007 Chrysler PT Cruiser convertible. It is a touring model. Actually, both these cars are touring models. Both of them are NA cars, and both of them are very different. And that's why I'm super psyched to take you guys along for this little video. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Jimmy. I am that one kid that, for some reason, likes these cars. A lot of people hate them, but a few of us love them. Right now, I currently own three of them. I have a 2004 PT Cruiser GT that is Mopar Stage 1 tuned, and is I've, just, I've done so much to it over the years. I've owned that car for like four years now. I'm Almost five years, I think, actually. I think it'll be five years in the beginning of 2021, which is wild to think about. I also have the red 2007 PT Cruiser Touring that is slightly modified. That car is an NA car. It's not a GT. It's not fast. It's not particularly fun, but it is a really nice car to drive every day, and it has treated me well. And then I bought this 2007 PT Cruiser convertible. It needed quite a bit of work mechanically, and I bought it just kind of as a little project, and I plan to sell it here going into summer. It's taken longer. It's been here for longer than I wanted it to be, but I've had a lot of fun with it despite. We'll get more into that in a minute, but that's who I am, and thank you guys so much for tuning in, all of you who may be new to the channel. Really appreciate you stopping by. These cars are very different, pretty much from the back of the hood back. Everything is different. Every panel on the car is different. Surprisingly, there's a lot of things about the interior that are different as well, even though they are, you know, similar. The way they even drive differently from a normal cruiser, they're both super, super fun in their own way. So I'm gonna go through in, in typical Doug DeMuro fashion, kinda take you guys along and show you the quirks and features and the differences between the two. And then we're gonna drive them both and talk about the differences when you're actually going down the road. And then I'm gonna kinda elaborate on my thoughts and kinda give you my, I guess, owner's review since I've had both of these cars for a little while now. Without further ado, I'm gonna take you off the tripod and let's get into this. So overall, like dimensions wise, the cars are actually pretty much the same. They're obviously like the same width and everything. And I initially thought that the convertible would be a lot shorter, but parking them side by side, it doesn't really seem to be. Maybe slightly, but I honestly don't think they are. You guys can see for yourself there, the fronts are lined up pretty closely. Actually, this one might be slightly further forward, which would make sense. So they're pretty much the same length, the same width. They're, they're, they're the same in that respect, but every panel, like I said before, from the hood back, is different. You can see, you know, the doors are completely different. These doors are way longer. These are way shorter. Every single panel here is different. On these cars, there's a little bit more of a hump here, which I kind of like that design, but it's interesting how they kind of flatten it out here and kind of spread it out in the design. It's actually pretty clean looking, and especially in a color like the silver, I don't know, I think it just fits the convertible better than it would fit one of these cars. I think the silver and the lighter colors fit this these body lines, I guess, in the back a little bit better in the way things have been changed ever so slightly. And obviously, everything else is different other than the bumpers, of course. The trunk is completely different. Even the rocker panels are different, but what's interesting is they actually split the rocker panel halfway down, and there's like a seam there. So it's almost like they used a normal cruiser's rocker panel like up to here and then cut it, made their own panel for the convertible and put it on top of it and just like overlapped it. It was really weird. On this car, it's gone on this side because I did some body work. You can kind of tell. I made videos on all that stuff on that car. Be sure to check it out. I'll put, I have a playlist that I started for all of the Project Vert videos. I'll link that up in the corner and down in the description in case you guys haven't seen any of the videos on this car and you want to keep up. Well, there you go. This has been a really fun project, but you can kind of see here on this side, there's like a seam there in the rocker panel where the two join. It's really weird. But yeah, obviously they're completely different in the back end. The convertible has this really cool roll bar that is standard on the car. A lot of people like to pick on that, but I honestly really like the way that it looks. Kind of adds to the retro feel and I don't know, the look of these cars has really grown on me. I didn't used to be a fan of the way the convertibles look, but after spending more time around them and especially after now owning one for a few months, it has been really cool and it's really grown on me. I have a new appreciation for the look and the aesthetic 
of these cars. I know the aesthetic of the PT Cruiser is probably the most controversial thing about them. Everybody hates the way they look, but I've always personally liked it. It's something different. It's something kind of quirky, I guess. And I don't know, there's just something about them. There's something about them. A lot of people just hate them, but there's a few of us that absolutely love them. But anyways, to get into the quirks and features a little bit of these cars, the trunk. There's no button actually on the trunk itself to open it like this car. This car, I simply go back here, press a little button, and it opens right up. And you see all of the junk in the back of my car because this is my daily driver. <laughs> this one, there's no button there. There's a button in the glove box, which I will show you in a minute, but there's also this button on the key. And it shows like the trunk being open and an X2. So you press it twice. And then this opens. I don't really know what the point of that is. If anybody does, comment below. But well, then the trunk kind of like comes out and up like this. Kind of comes up. It's re it's really weird, but it's honestly really cool. Considering the fact that this is a convertible, there's actually a decent amount of space back there to throw stuff. It's basically the whole trunk on one of these minus, you know, the top, obviously, because that's where the convertible top is. But something really interesting. I don't know why I found that absolutely fascinating when I first got the car. Like I said, the doors are way longer on these cars and they're a little heavier you can feel it when you swing it open the interior you know the dashboard everything here is completely the same the bezels on the airbag and over the gauges and everything their color match just like on that car everything is completely the same here except for two buttons here on the center stack this button right here is the all up and all down button unlike a normal window lock that you would have here like on that car the button in the middle is the window lock which keeps people from rolling down the windows in the back seat this is an all up and all down so basically i can press this button right here and roll all of the windows down simultaneously which is the two front windows and our two little tiny back windows obviously i can roll them up individually as well but then i could just press this button if i want to roll them all back up there they are. <laughs> and honestly, something that I discovered after owning this and driving this car for a little while is driving with the top down and the windows up is actually really, really nice, especially if you're on the highway going at quicker speeds. Maybe it's not like super hot outside. It's really cool because it's basically just roofless and it keeps the wind and the wind noise down a little bit. You can easily have a conversation with your passenger with the windows up. It's something really cool that you wouldn't think of and that you wouldn't think of helping that much, but it's honestly perfect having these up with the top down depending on the driving you're doing so there's our one button that's different but there's another button here chilling just right over here that it's pretty obvious what it does this is the button that rolls the top up and down press on the top part to bring the top up as you can see and the bottom to bring it down it's down right now so let's try to bring it up i actually i hope there's enough clearance to bring it up we'll find out there she goes yeah there's enough room in here There we go. And then there is this little hand latch to actually latch the top in place. You turn it and flap it back and that's that. You're back in a coupe. Such a cool thing to witness. This is the first convertible I have owned, obviously. First convertible my family's owned and really the first convertible that I've experienced. I rode in on once as a kid, that's about it. So being able to roll the top up and latch it and unlatch it and everything, it's just fascinating to me. I don't know why. It's one of those quirky, weird, things that you never forget. But something interesting and kind of cool is when you're in the interior with everything rolled up, the top up, all the windows up and everything is when you hit the lower, the top, all the windows drop automatically as well. As you can see. So all you gotta do is hold that button for like, I don't know, maybe it takes 10 seconds to roll the top down. It's an older car, I don't expect any miracles. But all you gotta do is hold that button and now you're completely wide open and ready for some fresh air. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking like a salesman right now, even though I you know you guys are either here to pick on me or you're here because you, you already love them and it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I just, I love these cars. There's something so weird and cool about being in this thing and driving it. It's got soul. It's got spirit. But anyways, other than those two buttons, everything else is pretty much the same in here. Of course, the windshield's different and the roof line is actually slightly lower, which I'll talk about um, later on in the video when we actually drive the car. But other than that, everything's the same. The seats are basically the same. As you can kind of see, there's a look at the seat here. And then here's a look at the seat in my other car. They're basically the same, except the fabric they used in this was slightly different. Well, they're pretty much shaped the same and they feel pretty much the same when you're sitting in them The big difference though is well for one thing This one has power front back and up and down seat on the driver's side It's kind of cool something that my other car doesn't have but obviously the big difference is there is this push 
push release for the seat that drops the back so that you can get into the back seat. The back seat is obviously completely different, only a two-seater versus the normal bench seat. And the panels here in the back actually come in a little bit compared to a wagon, and that's because the mechanism for the top and everything and the motors and everything are down in here. So this kind of comes out to house them. Also got our little speakers right here. It's actually pretty comfortable back here. And there's still a decent amount of room for even an adult to sit back here. It's not too bad at all. And I am picky about back seats because I hate riding in them. So I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it. <laughs> but a couple things about this. I know a lot of people picked on the PD Cruiser because they didn't spend the most time and money on the development of some things. Which, you know, they were an economy car from the start. They were always a cheap car to buy, even when they were brand new. And the convertible being kind of something that came later. The fact that they kind of built it off of a, a normal car. It wasn't specifically a convertible but still there's a few things where you look at it and you're like oh that was probably an afterthought for example the speaker placement it's like partly covered up by the seat here which is very interesting i thought it's almost like they designed it in and you know like just just didn't calculate things quite right but also this thing like i don't i don't really know what the point of it is i think it's like a bottle opener though that, or that's all i could think it that it is i don't really know there are normal cup holders back here though which is kind of cool they also are filthy and need to be cleaned and they fold in that's just normal and very nice also something interesting is this has the little cargo tie downs that the normal cars have i believe that's what these are for anyways because the normal cars the seats will not only fold but they can be completely removed from the vehicle i don't know what other purpose they could possibly have but this car still has them even though you know there's there's no trunk here or anything so you're obviously not going to be tying anything down i remember wondering about that and wondering if there was a way that you could like fold these down or something but i don't believe there is any way to do that correct me if i'm wrong down in the comments another interesting thing is because the driver's seat is a power seat when i do the little seat release thing to get out of the car here it just pushes the back down but the, the actual sliding motion is only controlled by the electric motor when you push it on the passenger side the seat will also slide all the way forward just like that and gives you a lot more room to get out so the passenger side is definitely the go-to as far as getting in and out of the car is concerned just another something that's like i wonder i wonder if that was an afterthought or just something that they didn't really think of when they did the power seat it's not really an issue though not something that i'm gonna sit here and complain about that's for sure but that's about it other than that they are the same like i said the dashboard is exactly the same the door panels even though they're like slightly longer they were designed slightly longer the design of them is the exact same as the other cars just so you guys can see comparatively there's no button here for the top this is a window lock button obviously other than that the interiors are the same you can see the door panels are exactly the same except they're not like extended back and the seats are essentially the same other than the fact that this car is way messier that's my laptop and my headphones and this random seat cover on that seat because i had a stain in it and you know daily driver things and as you can see too here the back seat is like completely different it's one bench and it folds down and everything it'll fold not only down but up and it can be completely removed really easily it even has a handle so you can carry it right out of the car like it's a suitcase or something so those off the top of my head are the main differences let me know in the comments if i missed anything any little feature or something that is different on these cars they are obviously the same car it, it's extremely obvious but really like i said from the hood back it's completely different and it's just really cool to see see how they change things up to make the convertible work and I don't know it's just such a weird and such a neat little car that's that's just why that's why I love them I appreciate things that are different and that are weird and that's why I love these cars I'll admit all day that they're weird because they are that's why I like them though <laughs> I really have to drive them and take you guys along with that to show you the rest of the differences so we're gonna skip ahead to tomorrow when the sun is out and the weather's a little nicer and we're gonna go cruising with the top down Right, boys it is a beautiful new day and we are going to start things out by taking the daily cruiser out for a spin aka the wagon example in this little comparison probably not the most fair comparison since this car is modified slightly you guys have seen the videos you guys have seen this car plenty so you know all about it but essentially it's lowered it's on teen progressive rate lowering springs which definitely changed the handling up quite a bit Got a lot of different suspension parts and it also has the exhaust which makes it sound completely different and it's loud and obnoxious obnoxious which it's a little bit too obnoxious honestly for me but I've still been enjoying it it's it's so loud so driving in a straight line down the road these cars you know as you would expect 
they are very similar. They're on the same platform, they're the same, basically the same car. The weight ratios are a little bit different. God, that's a huge bump. And some things like that, but not really very far off. But a couple things that I want to note here while we're driving this car that I'm going to kind of touch on when we drive the convertible is, for one thing, this car feels really solid being the size that it is. It's like a, you know, 3,100 pound car or something like that. So it's on the light side. These cars are, you know, they're not super fast. You're not going to win any races, but this car is just really honestly a nice car to drive. It's really nice. It's very comfortable. It's spacious inside for the size that it is. Comfortable seating position. It's not too low. It's not too high. And something I really want to touch on here is the visibility here in the wagon. It's actually very good. Some cars like the vans that I've driven, I drove a lot of vans back when I used to actually be a uh, parts delivery for Nap Auto Parts. That was my job before I started doing this stuff full time. I drove vans and things like that for them and I've driven like minivans in the past. I absolutely hate minivans and E-Series vans are okay but there's still like this weird thing with the visibility and with like the short hood and everything and the way they're set up you feel like you're gonna fall out of it almost. But I don't feel that way at all with these cars. It's just, it's a perfect balance. If you really wanted to, you could put a racing seat or a different seat that would give you a little bit more of a sporty stance within the car. It'd be very easy to do, and it would probably make a big difference as far as that's concerned, but this car, being completely stock interior-wise, is perfect for, you know, being a daily. It's something that I just kind of bat around in and get stuff done in. Like I said, very comfortable car, and just, just nice to drive. This is the fun part. Time for some top-down action, baby. That's a little bit more quiet. That's the way it's supposed to sound. The first thing I noticed getting behind the wheel of this car is, well, for one thing, it's not daily driven, so the brakes had like a little bit of surface rust on them because this car has been sitting for a while. Also, I think I need to top off the power steering fluid because there might be a bubble or two in it still from when we drained it before. I've noticed that the power steering systems on these cars are just impossible to completely bleed. But initially, again, it feels like the same car, just a little bit different. And I think one of the main reasons for that is not just the weight distribution like I talked about before, but also the roof line. You don't really notice it, but the windshield in the convertible actually sits quite a bit lower here on your horizon compared to the hatchback. The hatchback has a much taller roof, and it's something you kind of notice when you get in this car. It's not a bad thing, but it's it's something you notice. I remember that was the first thing that I noticed when I took this car on the first drive was I remember thinking, man, the visibility is different. And it's kind of funny because the visibility is obviously amazing because when you have the top down, even with the windows up, you can see literally everywhere other than you know where the windshield is but it's just kind of funny how it sits just ever so slightly lower and you notice that it's not again like I said it's not a bad thing whatsoever if anything it's kind of cool how you feel like you're a little bit more in a cockpit with the wind flying around you and it's just it's a really just awesome weird cool feeling driving this car it's 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 indescribable can't even think of the right words for it it's just so cool you know what, guys I'm gonna pull over right here and we're gonna roll the top up because I'm scared that I'm gonna get back and realize that my audio is completely ruined by the wind so we're gonna roll this baby up just in case there we go something I know a lot of people asked me about was how is road noise and wind noise inside the car with the top up because obviously you think the top you know more air more wind more noise in general would make its way into the cabin and make it not very pleasurable to drive with the top up. And while I may hear a little bit more noise coming from the road and, and just from the environment once you get up to speed, it's not noticeable really at all unless you pay attention to it. I feel just like I'm driving a hatchback except with a slightly lower roof line. It's, it's, it's interesting, but it's kind of cool. It gives the car a unique little, just something different about it. It's different than a hatchback, not just because of the fact that there's no roof, but just because of the way the upper half is shaped and the way that the top is shaped differently than a normal roof would be. It took me a while to like put my finger on that 100%, but I think I realize it now. It's, it's really, it's weird, but it's awesome. <laughs> That's all I can say. That's the only words I have for it. I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Guys, I'm not good with these videos because I'm a really like, I'm more on the emotional side. I'm, I'm more of a feeling person. I'm not logical. I don't go through like Doug Timiro and go, well, A, B, and C equals D. 
and that's it. You know, this car has A, B, and C versus this car has D, E, and F, and that makes it better. I don't do that. I drive cars for the feeling. I drive it for the emotion, and I keep become attached to cars for their weird, quirky reasons, and you know, I, I'm, I'm weird like that. I'm weird like that. And I think a lot of you guys can relate. A lot more you guys than I, I realized before relate with that, and, and you know, that's why we're car enthusiasts, is because it's more of like a form of self-expression than anything with, you know, modifying your car and the car you own and, you know, what you do with it, how you drive it. It's, it's, a, it's in a weird way, it's self-expression through your car. And it's really cool, honestly. But now we're moving down the highway. I'm doing about 55 or 60, something like that. And the car feels really good. You can hear actually a tiny bit of road noise, but I talked about that before. I think part of that is because we either need a wheel bearing or it could just be the alignment that, and the alignment being slightly off. My steering wheel is slightly crooked as well. So we have to get that checked here at the beginning of this coming week. But this car is literally 100% and ready to go. It drives really, really well. And it's such a fun car to cruise around. And I I can't even tell you. All right, and here she is in her final resting place for the day. Got her up here by the road where I'm gonna be putting a sign hopefully in the window. As time goes on and as we start selling more cars, I'm gonna hopefully have more area up here um, kind of set up so I can keep some cars parked up here for sale. Especially if and when we hopefully get a dealer's license here in New York, which will eventually happen. For now, this is where she sits until she has a new home. The paint job turned out absolutely insane on this car. It looks so, so, clean other than it's still needing a little bit of alignment work and, and having something figured out there which will hopefully be sorted out again by the beginning of this week i'll keep you guys updated on all that car is 100 but I, i'm gonna be sad to see it go honestly there's something weird about that car that i absolutely love speaking of ways this car is looking pretty good today Ooh, i love that car a lot and i will hate to see it go eventually too but i think it is destined to leave the fleet here at some point in the near future as well i just want to make some big changes here and um do some things different ptgt will obviously never go anywhere that's my baby right there but yeah guys between the insulation project and just everything else going on i have been staying beyond busy which it feels good i'm really excited for everything that's slowly coming into fruition right now and hope you guys are too honestly as far as convertible versus hatchback is concerned i think i I still have to go with the hatchback as much as i love the convertible um the hatchback is still my favorite it's just a pt cruiser and while the convertible is just so cool for what it is um i still prefer the hatchback i prefer the look of the hatchback a little bit more and just everything about them is just a little bit more a little bit more me but you know if you really love the top down open air experience and uh, you want something weird and different that's the car for you right there <laughs> it's so awesome and i'm gonna miss having the bird here but we've got a lot more to come that's all I can say. So if you haven't already, again, smash the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button on this video if you enjoyed it. I think it was a really fun video to throw together really quick. I wanted to do it ever since I bought that car. And uh, I hope it turned out good for you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for this quick little video. You rock. God bless. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.